there's really bad information out there and there needs to be a better solution. What are some things that you think are worth debunking for somebody wanting to create more content online? Sure. So I can call it a couple. The first one is this idea that consistency is king. I think there is always room for consistency in the world. And of course, being consistent is better than not being consistent in most realms. But this idea that if you're consistent, your content will do well is completely misinformed. And in mm -hmm. fact, I think it can be really, really detrimental because I see so many other content creators out there who go and they create content for a very, very, very long time without the right checks and balances. And they're like, why is my content not doing well? I've been doing this for two years. And I'm like, I'm so sorry that you've been doing this for two years. Like who told you to keep going with this kind of content that had no validation and, and so far no one, no one's interest. So that's one thing. Consistency, I think is again, can be beneficial, but it's much more important to find validation and to make sure that what you're putting out there, even if it's inconsistent is really excellent. Another mm -hmm. misconception that I see with content these days is there is a lot of hype around gating content. And I run a product, Trends, for example, that is mm -hmm. a gated content product. However, I would say- Sorry, most... just really, really quick, explain that for someone who might not know. Yeah, so The Hustle is a daily newsletter, which started several years ago that was about business and tech. And then Trends is an offshoot of that. It's a second product that The Hustle company built, which is around trends kind of before they're happening or before they become big so that people can use them to create businesses, to invest in businesses, to just feel ahead of the curve, whatever it might be. But that product, unlike the daily email, is gated and it does cost $299 a year. So in addition to trends, you know, you see Substacks, you see tons of different platforms today, which people are very excited about. And there's reason to be excited about them around gating content. But I would say the, the kind of pieces of advice that I see that are inaccurate, especially for early creators, is that most early creators, not all, but most should not be getting their content. The content is the engine for them to actually reach people, to grow their brand, to actually generate awareness. It is a tool and they're hiding that tool behind a, a paywall. The reason right. that trends and other products have worked, trends had a one and a half million email list, being right. a daily email, which could drive awareness. And so if you don't have an awareness under them, that's another way where I just see people who just get very excited about what's new, what's cool. And in this case, I think it's really, really misleading. Another thing that I, I see a lot of creators these days do wrong is they think that a lot of the newer ways to reach people are the best ways. So for example, they're so focused on trending on Hacker News. They're so focused on these really transient channels like Reddit or Twitter and getting something to go viral there. Now there's, again, there's nothing wrong with these ideas and there's nothing wrong with them as long as they're balanced with other more sustainable channels. And so, for example, one of the least cool channels that a lot more people should be in investing in is SEO. And a lot of people think SEO is saturated. It's not saturated. It's of course more competitive than it was five, 10 years ago, but it is one of the only channels where you can really truly build up a significant amount of traffic over a significant period of time. And so those are just a couple examples where, again, the advice isn't necessarily always bad in the sense that it's going to, you know, ruin your life or something like that. But I do think it can lead you astray and it can lead creators in directions where they're like, oh, why is what I'm doing not working? And what I tried to do is lay out the full landscape of content and what you can do today. And hopefully how, from my experience, I would encourage people to think about it and avoid some of these little traps. It's important to remember that we're always being marketed to. And so mm -hmm. you see a lot of this excitement around gating content and there's reason for it outside of just marketing. It is exciting that we have this creator economy and we can make micro payments and people can develop a really sustainable living through their content. That's very exciting. But also remember that there are companies that are growing their platforms that are also paying creators, for example, to be on those platforms. There's right. also just, if you go to Substack and you go to, I don't know if this page still exists, but there used to be a page that highlighted the top 10 to 30 Substackers. And if you go line by line across those Substackers, they all had massive platforms elsewhere. And again, some of them are actually pay being paid to be on Substack. Oh, yeah. And so this narrative around anyone can make money online by getting their content is a narrative out. Some people can do it. I just, I think it's really, really important if you're a new creator to understand that narrative and understand the gaps in it 
and if that applies to you. And in many cases, I think if you're really early on to your point, let your content work for you. It's mm -hmm. so much, you can get access to a much more exponential curve if you allow that to happen. And this is not just true with content. Why do you think that venture capital companies allow companies like Uber to lose money for so, so, so long? It's to build up that momentum to which at some point, at least in theory, they would become profitable and they would start making money off of that network that they've built. Right. The same thing is true with content. If you allow it to work for you, then at some point you can turn that around. At some point you can gate things. You can make money through other approaches to monetization, but it's really up to the individual person. I guess my point is just at least know the game that you're playing or the goals yeah. that you're trying to work towards and how gating your content can potentially prohibit that.